Some of us say structures made of wood look outdated. Because these days, things are easy to replace through new inventions and past developments. But what will happen if we continue neglecting and forgetting the things that some ways became part of our lives? In today's NSA episode, let us be amazed by the new learnings we will share. This episode might be a door for you to look back at the past. So join us as we explore, learn, and improve with Dr. Chick Fadrichella, a wood conservation specialist, here in Sensei, their skills and talents. Hi, I am Chick Fadrikala. I'm a wood conservation specialist. I am a researcher for the Center for Conservation of Cultural Property and Environment in the Tropics in USD. I'm also a lecturer at the Graduate School of USD. I teach uh, seminars class, uh, which is Introduction to uh, tim Conservation of Timber Heritage. Well, my family comes from Romblon. I live now in Laguna, but I was born, raised, and educated in Manila. Ah, conservation of heritage. Well, actually, when I joined the program of uh, USD Graduate School Masters in Cultural Heritage Studies, that was in 2002. Uh, well, initially I was engaged in, uh, more interested in tourism. But eventually, when I had a subject in conservation, I was uh, encouraged by my professor to uh, concentrate on the conservation of timber heritage. According to her, wala pang specialist sa wood uh, conservation sa Philippines. Yeah, well, uh, I finished my high school in Manila Science High School. So, alam na natin, na science track na yung pupuntahan ko. I uh, entered UP Diliman as an electrical engineering student. And then after three years, I passed the Bumbushu Scholarship and I went to Japan to study uh, control engineering. And then, well, I studied uh, superconductors there. After finishing my technical school, that's for three years, I entered the university uh, where I studied uh, semiconductors. Naman. But I finished actually information technology and computer science. But my research is actually about materials. Well, actually, uh, I met uh, my professor, Eric Zerudo, in Tokyo in 1991. He was already, well, engaged in uh, heritage. And when I came back to the Philippines, I met him again in 1999. He was the director of the GSS Metropolitan Museum and GSS Museum after. And uh, well, sumasama ako sa ano niya, mga trips niya, tourism. And from there, he, after he finished his uh, master's in Melbourne, uh, he opened up together with Father Abanyo and used this master's in cultural heritage program. And he invited me to join that uh, heritage uh, program in USD, master's program in USD. Well, before County Lang, uh, previously there was a need for a professor to have the master's degree. But yung may passion talaga for heritage, ngayon dumadami na. And for people engaged in uh, conservation of timber heritage, well, iba levels of uh, engagement. So there are people I know in NCP uh, who are engaged in conservation of built structures. I think this is their mandate. And uh, restoration of wooden objects also. But uh, my background, I have my master's in cultural heritage studies and my PhD is in forestry, wood science and technology. And I think I'm the only one who has that uh, degree. 
because my dissertation was about conservation practice in the Philippines. Yeah, so I think I'm the only one specializing with that kind of background. Uh, well, depending on if I'm passionate, uh, I do a lot of things, but as much as possible, I would like it to be related to uh, conservation of uh, wooden built heritage. I'm an Ecomos trustee right now, but I'm also an member, expert member of the uh, International Wood Committee in ECOMOS and the only Filipino member of that scientific committee in ECOMOS. And I'm also a member of the Wood Collector Society based in the U.S. And again, I'm the only one, I'm the only mem Filipino member of that uh, society. So, And I'm also a mem member of uh, international conservation uh, organizations like the IIC based in UK. Well, ICOMOS Philippines, so it's short for Interna International Council for Monuments and Site. So it's the advisory body for the World Her UNESCO World Heritage Convention. So we are all technical people in ICOMOS uh, who give uh, advice how to uh, conserve uh, monuments and sites. That's a very good question. <laughs> it's very difficult. But now we are in coordination with UNESCO Bangkok since Vegan is a declared our World Heritage Site. And there is an emergency fund that we could tap. And so but we're now creating uh, how we're going to uh, allot that fund in our assessment. And I'm sure Vegan as a World Heritage Site uh, maraming fundings na po, ma, sila makukuha. Well, they can give their donations, they accept donations to fund uh, our activities such as uh, our rapid assessment. And, yeah, and they could we also conduct uh, seminars on the conservation of heritage and we welcome uh, anyone interested to attend. Uh, those kind of uh, seminars. For more Limang Siglo videos, you can visit our social media accounts. So even the pre-Hispanic period, uh, the wood that's mostly used because of its durability is Mulave. So until the Spanish period, Mulave was widely used, even Ipil. No? So, well, towards the end of the Spanish period, uh, because of well, engineers were sent to the Philippines by the uh, Spanish government to build uh, well, many government uh, facilities, and they used uh, mulave as the main material. And then when they planned to uh, build the Tutuban to the Gupan railway station, so, the Mulave is already lacking for the railroad ties or the traviesas. So, they had to find alternative uh, wood species. So, Mulave uh, was widely used during the, uh, from the pre-Hispanic to Hispanic period. Rare na yung mga Mulave na malalaki, but still, uh, there are Mulave uh, trees in our forest, but they're protected now. But there's one uh, structure in Mindanao. I don't know if you're familiar with the National Cultural Treasure, the Asaan Church in Misamis Oriental. Uh, most of the wood used for the restoration of the church is Mulave. So when I asked them how they were able to procure Mulave, they said they had to take, uh, to ask permission from the cultural agencies like NCP, National Museum, and uh, of course, uh, DNR. And, uh, well, you really have to know the tricks how to uh, transport or procure your molave. So uh, before, I also thought that the available new molave you cannot procure. Pero may para ano mga pala? Pwede pa? Meron, meron naman. And that's why in Ikumos, we also uh, spouse the creation of historic forest reserves. So this, uh, this is an area that you designate for a forest 
we will harvest wood f for the re restoration and rehabilitation of your uh, wooden built heritage. Mulave is a very strong wood, that's why it's preferred by our ancestors. And, well, of course, the number one enemy of wood is moisture. So we must avoid constant exposure to moisture. So in moisture, uh, it will be attacked by molds or fungi. So it will rot. So, pero matagal. Kasi it's a very durable wood. Like epil. Uh, this house. <laughs> this house, uh, the Dr. Luis Santos house, it's an amazing example of uh, timber heritage and it's, it's an, uh, an explosion of art deco. In the flooring uh, above, I saw uh, red and yellow nara and use of kamagmong. So those three wood species. And I know uh, if the other red uh, wood planks are made of epil. And I've heard that they're from Bicol. Uh, during the American period, this is an American period structure, and most of the interiors are uh, mostly uh, made of Nara. I'm not really sure if the posts are made of timber. So, timber has uh, strong or good properties. They could stand uh, seismic uh, waves or earthquakes. Yeah, it's a good example how you take care of your uh, heritage house. Yeah. It's well maintained. The flooring is well waxed and painted. So paint is a material to prevent uh, good deterioration. And I don't see any parts of the house with peeling paint. So I think it's a well-maintained house. Except for some watermarks, probably due to uh, contact with water from rain from the outside. Uh, because of the increased consciousness on the value of your heritage, I think there are, uh, well, uh, better taken care of than before than before. So, and uh, we have more uh, technical persons who could assist or give recommendations in the preservation or conservation of our heritage structures. So, in terms of education, so you have the heritage program in USD, Tatene has one, and I think LaSalle is coming up with one uh, program on the conservation of heritage. Uh, in Cebu, San Carlos has a uh, good conservation program, but it's under the Architectures College of Architecture. Well, one is access, of course, especially if you want to know the uh, wood species of areas that's very high. So the access is always a problem. And of course, uh, where to cut, you need to cut a very small portion to know the wood species. And that's a challenge if it's an assembly of uh, wood, uh, wooden parts. Well, okay, uh, we look for the cross section. What is the cross section of the wood? So you have the main stem of the tree, and if you cut it, you'll see the circular portion above. So if you're familiar with that, that's the cross section. And from there, we use a lens or a portable microscope and look at the uh, cellular structure. And then based on that arrangement of cell, uh, cellular structure, of the cells in the structure, uh, we will know the species of the wood. For more Limang Siglo videos, you can visit our social media accounts. No, it's difficult, especially if 
uh, it's already varnished. So if there are co some coatings already, it's very difficult. So in my case, uh, I don't rely on just looking at uh, the, without conducting uh, the technical investigation. So a yellow wood could be Molave as well. So like this uh, plant, I know it's Nara, but it could be Molave, just the same color. Once it's varnished. Uh, well, first, of course, if you have a drawing of the site or the structure you want to investigate, that's very important to uh, plot your findings. Uh, in my case, in case there's no stra drawings, then I use my iPad, take a picture, and then uh, make some cuts on the timber component and uh, take the cross-section, photo of the cross-section, identify the wood species, and then we plot it. Yeah, it is very important because heritage well, we define how it is, uh, it gives uh, identity uh, to the present, gives meaning to the past, and inspire the future. So, we, uh, we need to preserve them so that, uh, you know, we we'll, can learn a lot from, uh, from heritage structures, certain structures. So the fact that they have uh, survived uh, hundreds of years, so there's something there that we should learn. So in, for building better or building back better, especially in times of uh, uh, disasters. One of the parts, well, probably the area that's not being investigated in a structure is the plenum. So what's the plenum? It's the area below the roof. It's defined by your trusses. So, and uh, I think that's part that's most intact. So, well, among the churches that I have investigated, it's always the trusses that's more intact. One of the more authentic uh, parts of the uh, church. So, I think we should learn more about the uh, configuration, well, the construction technique of trusses. And by uh, learning or knowing the construction technique, we'll be able to build stronger. Okay? Because, you know, it's always a recurring problem and there's a typhoon that uh, roofs are blown off. So probably we can learn from the past how they uh, built our roofing system. Uh, it's just a matter of scheduling. So which uh, you prioritize first. Well, of course, everything depends on the budget. So niyaman ka sabay sabay yan. Kung sino may budget, you know una. And well, sometimes kung walang budget. Kung kailangan gawin, uh, I do it. Well, actually, I have an assistant who conduct uh, the actual identification of wood. But you don't stop in identifying the wood species. You have to link it to the history of the structure. And uh, of course, why do we need to know the wood species? So in case of uh, a, a component deteriorates, you have to find compatible, if not the same. First, of course, the same uh, wood species. Then if you cannot find one, you have to look for a comp compatible wood species. Well, for wood conservation, I suggest that, uh, well, you enroll in a course. Uh, there's only, well, if there's a forest school uh, in your vicinity, you could enroll and then learn the basics of uh, wood science. It would greatly help 
in your uh, endeavor to conserve uh, Timbilbilt your Timbilbilt heritage. Conserving our heritage, churches, and cultures is the same as the importance of modernization. This structure became our shade when we had nowhere to go on sunny day, or an evacuation center when heavy rains started to pour into our place. And even though the world seems to change, these are the things that we must save and conserve. Because these things once made us see the value of our past, why we are living in the present, and how we will continue to have our identity for the future. Thank you for joining us in this NC episode with Dr. Chick Fadrikala, a wood conservation specialist and a researcher at the Center for the Conservation of the Cultural Property and Environment in the Tropics. Don't forget to catch us again next week as we share the last episode of our Sensei Season 2. Don't miss it out and join us as we explore, learn, and improve because life is a continuous learning process. This is Sensei Season 2, Their Skills and Talents. <music>